In my first two Acrobots, I used these wiper motors to control the arms and legs. You see them here in the shoulder and here in the hips. And they're incredibly strong, incredibly cheap, but not very reliable and I kept on breaking them. So then when I was researching how I wanted to control the legs and the arms of my third robot, I stumbled upon these motors from Cube Mars. And after I contacted them, they were kind enough to partially sponsor them for this project. I've been using them now for half a year, but have they solved all my problems? Hi, my name is Daniel and you're watching the second in a short video series where I explain different aspects of the Acrobot. This is an acrobatic robot that I perform with and I'm originally a circus artist, but thanks to YouTube videos I was able to learn robotics. And with these short technical explanations, I want to give back to this community. So this one is about the motors, but if you don't want to miss out on the electronics and the frame and the 3D printing and whatnot, make sure to subscribe and you'll see them all. The difference between a normal DC motor and this motor module is that a motor normally only spins forwards or backwards, whereas this module has a motor inside, in this case a brushless DC motor, but also has a gearbox, in this case 10 to 1 ratio, a bunch of mounting holes, an encoder, a motor driver, all integrated in one neat package. Of course, a wiper motor also has an integrated gearbox, and with an external motor driver and an external encoder, it's still a very useful tool, so useful in fact that I made a whole 25 minutes documentary technical explanation going into the details of how to control these. You can watch this video, there's a link somewhere in the description. They are also both similarly powerful. They have about 25 Nm torque each, which is crazy strong. For comparison, a small hobby server like this, if you've ever, have ever held one in your hands, you notice that it's already quite tough to hold back. This is about 0.1 Nm torque. So imagine the power of 250 of these, that is how much these motors, but also how much the wiper motors can deliver. But the performance of the motor module is still better. It spins about four times faster than the wiper motor does, so that can be useful sometimes. But for me, the biggest difference is that these planetary gearboxes are back drivable. That means that I can safely rotate the motor by hand. But this also has a side effect that you can measure the amount of torque that's being applied on the motor. For example, I programmed this arm to stay in place and you can see how the current goes up when I press on it and this translates to the amount of torque that is being applied on it. And this is why they're so popular in, for example, robot dogs or cobots because they can kind of sense their environment through the motors, which is amazing. The control boards of the motor use the canvas to communicate. It can read things like the target position, the target speed or the target amount of torque. And in return, it can send you the actual position or the current used or the temperature, these kind of things. I had never used the canvas before, it was a bit tricky to set up. I'm using ESP32s to send data to it, but then this needs to go through a logic level shifter and then to the CAN transceiver, and then you also need terminator resistors, and then your CAN network needs to be in a certain shape for it all to work. But once you have it all set up, it's actually super stable and I've never had any issues with it since. So, has it all been good? Well, I'm still really happy with the choice, but it's not been without challenges. Most importantly, it's really hard to get started with the programming. Um, there is documentation, but it's not very easy to read always, and sometimes even incomplete. And it's really easy to make mistakes. Even now that I know a little bit better how they work, I still sometimes make programming mistakes. And because these motors are so powerful, those mistakes can sometimes get quite dangerous. There was also an issue with the encoder. The motor has an absolute encoder, so it should know at all times exactly what position it is in. But it turns out that the encoder is mounted on the input shaft, not the output shaft. And the input shaft spins 10 times for each full revolution of the output shaft. So if you disconnect the motor and then move it more than a tenth of a circle and then reconnect it, you don't know exactly what is the direction of the output shaft. There are other motors from Cube Mars that do have this feature, that they have a second encoder, but I didn't read the documentation carefully enough. But then my friend Esme suggested we solve this with a magnet mounted in the arm connectors. And the magnet passes by a hall sensor that we mounted in here. So then whenever we pass by the hall sensor, the magnet is detected. And then we know that we are within this tenth of the rotation. And then the absolute encoder takes over and can tell me the precise uh, rotation between this tenth of the circle. And then from there we can calculate the whole circle. It's a bit of a hassle, but it works perfectly. We just have to always calibrate it after we start up. We need to pass by the sensor so that the arm knows in which tenth of a circle it is. And then my last challenge is with the mounting holes. They're very shallow and they take an M3 thread, which is very fine. And then I want to mount these arm connectors on them, these 3D printed ones. But because the robot vibrates so much, everything comes loose out of them and I can't tighten them very well. And I even tried to secure them with permanent Loctite, but still they vibrated loose over time. Right now we're considering to replace the 3D printed part with a metal part so that we can tighten it perhaps more and the material doesn't flex so much. 
but I'm not sure yet if that's going to work. In the end, because these motors give me so much control and are thus far so reliable, I still think I made the right choice for using these for my Acrobots. There are still so many things that we didn't talk about, for example the software that you saw me use, or the battery options that you have for these, the load ratings, the mounting options. Um, so if you have questions about those, feel free to leave them in the comments, perhaps I can help. Also, um, CubeMart has been very helpful and communicative with me, so I'm sure you can also ask your questions directly to them. If you are curious about other parts of the robot, I already made a video about the frame, and there's stuff coming about the 3D prints, electronics and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching!